Well, good morning, everybody. Boy, it's, it's bright out there. We've got a lot of people here today. So I'm Pete Fiacco, and I'm part of the leadership team at NASA and JPL. And I'm going to talk today about something called HPSC, which is another four-letter uh, whatever that the government invents. So HPSC stands for High Performance Space Computer. A very unique name, I know, but it's pretty descriptive. Um, it's a partnership between NASA, JPL, and some of our technology partners, and I'm gonna kind of just go into it today. So, what do you need to do to build a space computer, right? It's the kind of thing that you need to do to build something that's highly reliable. And what you're gonna see later on in the presentation is HPSC is quite unique, because it's not targeted for, you would call it, government space. There's a lot going on in government space, commercial space, but there's a lot going on in industry where you need a reliable computer. People think autonomous vehicles and that kind of thing, but start thinking about industrial robot arms, medical stuff, that kind of thing. So here's what you need to do to build a reliable computer for space. It has to be highly performant, but it has to be very energy efficient. This is a big one, industry standards. We've all been talking about RISC-V and why it's an industry standard ISA and it's wonderful and all that good stuff. But you'll find HPSC as I get into it, it's a lot more than just the CPU ISA. It has to do with interfaces, it has to do with memory interface standards, uh, uh, networking interface standards and other things. Also has to do with software standards, right? The previous um, person talked about Google, Android and all the things that are going on there. Um, I talked about high-speed interfaces. We're uh, something called time and space partitioning. It, it's a term that some of us are familiar with, but basically what it means is uh, you allocate certain resources in the computer over time to do things, and you also allocate certain resources in the computer uh, space. Think of it as, as address partitioning or something like that. Well, what does that sound like, right? It sounds like security. It sounds like a way of doing, um, I don't know, uh, virtual partitioning to, to address um, security, to address uh, latency, processing latency, that kind of thing. So what you guys are starting to hear is, wow, this, these are the kinds of things we need to do for IoT applications, high performance computing, all kinds of other things, and that's what you'll see here. But HPSC kind of rolls it all up into one big cake that has all this meaningful technology and capability in all these industry standard ways. It's really the first time this has been addressed for these markets. Fault tolerance, reliability, availability, okay? In space, we think of radiation tolerance, but what does a radiation exposure thing do? It flips a bit somewhere, right? So we address that with parity ECC, all kinds of other things, something called TMR, um, redundancy, triple redundancy, quad redundancy. Um, these kinds of faults happen here on Earth, right? There's a bunch of testing going on at high altitude terrestrial stuff at Mexico City, Denver, Colorado, Mile High City, right? And we see soft air events take place. And so it isn't just for space, right? High reliability, high availability computing. That's what I want you to keep thinking in your head, okay? Obviously radiation hardened and radiation tolerance. That's very important. Now, this is an interesting one, and you'll see later how we address this. Historically, in the space community, this has been addressed with fundamentally radiation-hardened hardware, right? For those of you who do chips, you hear about dice flip-flops and that kind of thing, right? These radiation-hardened um, uh, memory elements, right? Well, that's part of what we do, but there's also a big software component here, and we'll talk about that later on. There's a big overlap between security and reliability. Somebody yesterday was talking about this. It's really important to start thinking that way. Again, complete platform security. So I hate to start like Star Trek or whatever, but you've heard the prime directive, right? Well, we have these guiding principles for what we did with HPSC, and you'll see the kind of little color box here, radiation hardness, uh, extensibility, high performance per watt, power efficiency is really, really important. Um, industry standards, standards interface, fault tolerant, safe design. So what it, did we come up with? So HPSC, it's a multi-core RISC-V SOC. 
But it's really more than that. We're not only delivering the SOC, we're delivering board software systems and a complete ecosystem. Um, we'll talk about this in a little more detail, but uh, protos are available in, in calendar 24 and fully space qualified stuff in 25. So it's happening pretty quick, especially in a space NASA government uh, mode. I know you guys in commercial side turn things around really, really fast. The government, maybe not so much, but HPSC is, is making big changes in that space. This is really a significant uh, uh, public-private partnership. That's kind of the way I want to see it. Uh, I want you to see it and understand. And, uh, and we'll talk about uh, some of the uh, major contributors. The, um, yesterday, I think, um, Microchip had a couple of presentations and talked about their uh, product roadmap, specifically uh, uh, FPGAs with embedded processors. They also talked about HPSC. The reason for that is, obviously, Microchip is our lead partner on this. Um, there are some really significant contributions coming from other people in the RISC-V community. Uh, Sci-5 is contributing the X280, which is the application core. We have two clusters, uh, four processors each, so eight. Uh, processors and application core, those are X280s. We love the X280 because the vector capability. Um, we'll be releasing more benchmarks and all kinds of things. We have uh, extensive capability to, to do benchmarking in emulation, simulation, in FPGA, and other uh, platforms. Um, we've run dozens, if not hundreds, of benchmarks, some of them very sophisticated. We have something called Space Bench, which is really uh, math intensive, does all kinds of cool stuff with math, and we run that through the vector engine. We're comparing that with current uh, technology uh, that, that we use in, in space and reliable applications, and we're seeing more than 1,000x speed up. Okay, not 1,000%, whatever, 1,000x. And that's with a relatively um, unoptimized uh, software stack in the, in the vector support. Okay, so one of the things I want to ask everybody to do, those of you working in software, especially the vector subsystems for RISC-V, keep going, that stuff is awesome. And it's only going to get better and better and better. So here's kind of the whole uh, kind of project roll up. Obviously NASA, JPL, and Microchip, I mentioned that. I mentioned government space. We have effectively everything that NASA and JPL do into the future is going to be HPSC based. Really trying to standardize on that. In addition, there's all this commercial stuff that's going on. I mentioned commercial space, commercial aviation, and defense. So look for HPSC to deploy in a variety, a wide variety of applications. So I'm going to talk about something we're getting terminology, autonomy, right? Everybody talks about autonomy, right? Robots moving by themselves and all that. Why is that important and what does it mean to us in the HPSC program? And I want to get into a little more philosophy here of why NASA is doing HPSC, why we pick RISC-V, um, kind of more than just the, the bits and bytes. So to us, autonomy is, is self-managing characteristics, adapting to unpredictable changes, right? I want to land something not only on the moon and Mars, but say Europa, whatever. I don't have a map of Europa. And if I set a spacecraft down on a big rock, NASA's gonna have a bad day, okay? So I have to look at the ground as I'm coming in at 24, 25,000 miles an hour and figure out where I'm gonna land. I have to do that in real time. Once I commit to landing, I can't stop, right? It's not like you throw up a parachute and retry, right? So what do I need to do? This is about autonomy. I have to sense what's happening. That's image processing, sensor processing. I have to perceive what those images and what those sensor readings mean, right? I don't want to drive my car into the side of a, of a, of a truck because it's all white on the side of the truck and I thought it was a, you know, a, 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 I didn't recognize it as a truck, right? I have to perceive the data, understand what it means. Then I got to decide what to do, right? And then I got to actuate it. I got to move motors, I've got to, um, uh, redirect a sensor, whatever it is, right? So sense, perceive, decide, actuate. That is autonomy to us, okay? And 
how does that map into the more NASA strategic framework, right? What, what is NASA? I mean, we do all this cool stuff. But, but what is the strategic plan and the strategic framework for that? And there's thousands of pages of stuff, and I distilled it down to what I think are, are four key objectives for NASA, right? Go. We want to go places, right? And so we got to have efficient space transportation and efficient transportation in general. We got to go, right? Then we want to land, right? Then we want to live there. So we're talking about habitation for machines and for people. And then once we're there, we're going to explore, right? So if you ever wonder about what NASA is up to, think of these four objectives. And I think it'll give you a very, very good understanding, right? Go, land, live, explore. Everything we do is about those four things. And if you think about it, we do that in the ISS, the International Space Station. We're going to be doing it on the moon. And then we're going to be doing it on Mars and other places. So we do things in kind of stepwise fashion. That's the other way to think about it. Now, how do I know what the government's doing? And we talk about, you know, does the government do planning and this kind of thing? Well, every 10 years, there's a study that's done by the National Science Foundation and NASA. And the study that matters to me, they call it the decadal study, decadal being every 10 years. So there is a 10-year plan. And the new 10-year plan just started, the calendar of fiscal 2023. So the Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey will set the milestone for Congress, for the US government, for, for spending money, priorities, and all kinds of things from 2023 to 2032, OK? And so how do I predict the future, right? Well, obviously, this study is telling me something about it. But what about the previous studies? If you go back and look at the previous decadal, I think there were a dozen or so major missions and things uh, that the study predicted that we needed to do, asked for us to do as a, as a nation. Virtually all of that got done. So based on historical precedents, I think this study is pretty much going to be a roadmap for the next 10 years. It's a public document. You guys can all go Google it and look it up. And take a look at it. There's a really good executive summary at the beginning. It's a, it's a large, detailed document. But take a look, and that'll tell you about the roadmap. So what does this decadal study say? It talks about autonomy and things that we have to do to accomplish these top, say, 16, 18, 20 missions and things that we're doing. And what are, it's, it's surface autonomy. How do we crawl around on Mars and, and do things? Science autonomy, once we're there, how do we make measurements? Um, uh, uh, on and on, you guys can, can read this, but, but it's all about autonomy and um, that requires computer power, computer processing power, and the ability to handle the kinds of data, the rich data sets that we're getting from these sensors. Um, again, I'm going back to the actual HPSC. Here's something about it in terms of, you know, high level. Uh, I talked about the RISC-V X280 cores uh, from Sci-5. There's a uh, security subsystem in here. There's a um, uh, kind of like a fundamental uh, a root processor that boots the whole thing. It's, it's the kinds of things you guys all deal with all the time. Um, I mentioned the vector engines, fault tolerant. Um, I want to talk about one of the I.O. interfaces, and I'll do that in a minute. But extensibility is really important. I talked about industry standards. So HPSC is extensible in a lot of different ways. You can use multiple HPSC chips on a single board and then multiple boards in a system. So HPSCs talk to one another. HPSCs also talk to external components. Um, that helps us expand functionality beyond the vector engine. So FPGA offloads, GPUs, AI processors, all that stuff. And you'll see these interfaces. We'll be announcing more and more details. All these interfaces are industry standard things that you guys deal with. That's pretty revolutionary for the government because they've all done, always done these sort of boutique interfaces. And we're moving away from that towards industry standard stuff. Um, power is really important, um, a scalability factor, not only performance, but HPSC has a power profile that can operate over more than two orders of magnitude. 
So depending upon what we're doing, we can dynamically power things up and down in a very granular way, more than we've been able to do before. And that's really important because um, there are times when uh, the computer needs to go to sleep and we're running out of uh, energy, we need to put it to sleep. There are times when we're like landing, entry, descent, and landing, they call it, EDL, uh, where we need maximum amount of compute and we don't even care what the power is at that point because we got to find a place to land, otherwise we crash. So two, more than two orders of magnitude between minimum and maximum power and we can dynamically scale back and forth. Um, I talked about fault tolerance. We have a very layered approach. Uh, in the past, a lot of the hardware has done process technology, uh, hardening, and uh, cell hardening. And we're doing much, much more than that. And you can see all the different things we're doing. Not only hardware, we have middleware and, and software and firmware in the operating systems, all kinds of other things. I talked about industry standard interfaces. One of the things we're doing, Ethernet is ubiquitous. We see it everywhere. We support gener generic Ethernet. We're also supporting a version of Ethernet. It's an IEEE. It's an 802 standard called TSN. TSN gives us a lot of things, uh, not only time synchronization and some important things for real-time systems, but um, uh, latency control and high availability and ultra-reliability on the, on the network interfaces. So um, those of you that care about networking, please go look up the IEEE 802T standard related to TSN, multiple standards, but related to TSN. Um, that's a very, very important technology moving forward. Um, the HPSC ecosystem. I mentioned we're not just delivering a chip, we're delivering an entire system um, that uh, NASA is seeding this initial thing and then industry is going to take it from here. So there's already plans for derivative works. We're going to be building the software ecosystem, board systems, um, and uh, we're going to be driving interoperability from day one. So there's going to be a whole portfolio of products uh, from microchip and others that will be completely interoperable, driving HPSC uh, forward for complete systems. So that's it. That's HPSC, the high performance space computer. And um, I'm very excited about it, as you can tell. And I hope you guys are too. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for your support for RISC-V.